At this time, I want to transition on to uh, Dr. Fowler from Victory Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, Dr. Fowler is the senior pastor uh, at Victory, and I'm so honored uh, that he would give us his time today and come and share a word of inspiration with us, as well as um, offer us, uh, man, just something I, I've become extremely accustomed to, uh, uh, this man's prayers. And so, Dr. Fowler, welcome to the uh, virtual community prayer gathering. <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity to spend more time with you. I appreciate it, Thank you, uh, Commissioner. And always happy to say hello and spend time with the Tech Queen. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Love you, Pastor Dr. Fowler. We yeah. love appreciate you so much. My whole family. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Our and, other pastor, cyber pastor. <laughs> know, she was sending me text talking about I'm, I need to talk to my CP. And I said, well, who is this? She said, this is your CM. And so said, what is the CP and the CM? She said, you're my computer pastor, and I'm your computer member. <laughs> um, there it is. And, and Commissioner, I want, pastor, to uh, we want I want to take the opportunity to thank you so much for you know, all the invitations and opportunities that you've given to me. I, I, I like to say to people, the first individual <clears throat> to give me an opportunity to speak to Las Vegas was you. And I'll never forget it. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. And God has blessed our friendship and blessed our fellowship from day one to this day. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Dewan, I think I'm back. I'm, um, I was dealing with some buffering with my low grade internet that I have. <laughs> I got to upgrade during this uh, quarantine, during this quarantine time. But Pastor, I'm going to turn the mic on over to you and uh, let you uh, just have your will and have your way. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I listened this morning and I want to say hello to um, uh, Evangelist Green. I listened to her and I also listened to Dr. Howard. I think God has amazing gifts in the family of faith. And every, every pastor, every preacher, every evangelist brings their own set skill set of gifts uh, to the community. And I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to fellowship with them today. God bless you both, um, Evangelist, and uh, God bless you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Howard. I think we've only met one once or twice. It was a blessing at that particular time, and I pray God gives us more opportunities to fellowship with one another. Some people have have what's called prophetic gifts, and they 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 speak to the body of Christ based on the prophetic gift that they have. Others have the gift of evangelism and drawing people with their love and their affection to Christ, as um, Evangelist Green has done. Um, my gift is prophetic, but it's prophetic in a different sense. When when you look at the uh, the Bible and you look at prophets in the Bible, you have some prophets who have the ability. The pastor still there? Yeah, I think he's having a, a buffer they, moment also. They foretell the future. But then there's another prophet that... Um, a form of a prophet, and that is an individual who forth tells. And that is he could take the word of God and he communicates that in a way that people are blessed by what the word has said. I, that is really what my gift is. I'm not a foreteller, but I'm more of a forth teller. And so I want to tell you what I've discerned from the word of God for our times today. In the book of Second Chronicles, Solomon says to the people that he wants them to pray toward the temple, pray toward the church, pray, pray toward the house of God, pray toward the place where we see God and know God resides. But in the sixth, sixth chapter, he says to God, he says, we know this house can't hold you. This house alone is too small to hold you. He goes on to say this world is too small to hold you. Now, the principle that he's addressing there is that God is transcendent. Uh, he's, he's a big God. Mama Nim used to say it like this, that God sits high. And so Solomon was saying, God, we, we know you sit high. But he goes on to say, but we also know that you are involved in the affairs of your people. So not only is God transcendent, but he's also imminent. Mama Nim would sing it this way, that he sits high and he looks low and he sees everything that we need. But seeing what we need and meeting the need are two different things. And God meets the need because he is omnipotent. 
So I, I know this, God is not quarantined, though many of us are quarantined, he's not quarantined. This world is too small to hold our God. And God cares about everything that's taking place in my life, in your life, in the lives of our neighbors, in the lives of our state neighbors, in the lives of every person on the face of this earth, God cares. And he's got the power to do something about it. So I want us to trust God, to depend upon God, to lean on God, and to know that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we could ever think or ask. I, I got a text last night from the tech queen saying that her mother pulled herself off the ventilator and, and after having been on it for five days. And we hear about people who are on the ventilator one or two days and they die because of how much compression it's putting upon the lives of people. But here she is. She's been off it for five days. She was on it for five days, took herself off of it, and is now out of the hospital because God has power. Everybody that's getting uh, the coronavirus is not dying because God has power. And some people that should get it because of the way that they are moving around irresponsibly don't get it because God has power. And we are going to recover from this because God has power churches that have had to close their doors and go virtual and pastors that have been in fear that the finances of the church would not come through and have only found out that the people have been more faithful faithful to the church financially in the midst of the pandemic than they were when they were coming to sit in the church house because god has power for me as a pastor here is the classic example of the power of god that no church is promised a dime from anybody, anywhere, at any time. But every week, week after week, month after month, year after year, God takes care of his churches. Victory is 57 years old. And for 57 years, God has been taking care of his church. He's not going to stop now. God has been taking care of this earth. Some say for millions of years, he is not going to stop now. God is too big for this issue, but he is right here with us in this issue, and he's got the power to see us through this issue. Let me pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you and we praise you for the fact that we have the privilege of being able to know you. I pray, God, that you would continue to abide with us, you would continue to reside with us, and you would continue to exercise your power. I pray specifically, Father, that you would help us to operate with wisdom. I pray for our leaders that you would give them wisdom on how to lead us through this pandemic. I pray that they would have sensible solutions that people can be motivated to follow that would lead us out of this pandemic. And then I pray that as they communicate those sensible solutions to us, that we would be committed enough and caring enough to do what's right to take care of ourselves and to take care of those that live in the house with us and to take care of those that are neighbors to us. And then I pray, Father, that the healing hand of your Holy Spirit would overshadow this world and specifically this city and bring healing to us. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to be able to glorify you, to bless you, to honor you, and to thank you when all this is over. But remind us, we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now, in the end, we absolutely will win. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Amen to that, Pastor, thank you. That was beautiful, man. Let me ask you this, Dr. Fowler, as we, and we can bring up, uh, before we go to um, Pastor K over in West Africa, um, Pastor, what would you say to our community right now as we continue to pray with one another, um, but we deal with the reality that we still have a lot of our community that look like us that are not sheltering in place, mm -hmm. that are not um, taking the, the, the proper precautions mm -hmm. in order for us to help each other and, and help our families. What word of encouragement would you give to our community? You know, one of the things that I, I tell people um, that remind me, you know what, I'm a grown man, I'm my own man, I got the right to make my own decisions, to do my own thing, to go my own way. And I remind them that all
Did we lose them? Making decisions that are not responsible decisions. Why would you go out without a mask on? Why would you not have gloves on? Why would you not stay uh, uh, six feet away from someone else when all of the science indicates that the way that we're going to eradicate this problem is by us following these sensible solutions? So let's make decisions that are responsible decisions. Yeah. Let's try to take your right away from you at all. All we're trying to do is make sure that the, the, the majority of us that can, can make it through this. And so let's be responsible. Your part and my part is to make decisions that are responsible. And so when I go out, I cover up, put gloves on, stay away from people as, as bad as I hate to do it. But I do it because it is a responsible decision. And then I go back to a house. And um, when, when I'm in that house uh, with other people, I want to make sure that they're safe. There you go. <laughs> I want to make sure that they're safe. And I want them to make sure I'm safe. So, amen. <laughs> <laughs> we all pulling out our stuff. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, everybody got it. Yeah, we can. yeah. So let's let's make responsible decisions and um, yeah. let's be responsible people, and, and that's that's the best we can do for each other. Yeah, Dr. Fowler, we appreciate you. I want you to, if you don't mind, if you got a little bit more time, hang in there with us. Absolutely. Uh, to the tech queen and, and, and my long standing friendship with her and Carlton. God bless you, met her mother, and she's done some seminars for me over here at the church. Appreciate you. And um, uh, Auntie Lois, uh, there's none like you, but thank you for your, your spirit, your gift of evangelism. And Patty, what a gift you are to our city. We thank God for you, and you are a great blessing today. Dr. Howard, good to see you again. And I pray that God will give us more opportunities to see each other. I probably don't have to wait till 2022, but <laughs> if, if we do, we just do. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, Jesus, Jesus said in the gospel of Matthew, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That passage right there where he said, learn of me is an indication that Jesus says, one of the reasons why many of us are weary and worn down is because we don't know enough about him. Mm. So let's learn more about Christ and his power and his ability to see us through good days as well as bad days. We learn of him. We'll have less stress and we can do more stretching. Oh boy, that's powerful. Very powerful words here today. And I thank you all so very much. And Tech Queen, uh, home run again. Amen. We're so excited. This was such a wonderful group of people, anointed, powerful, yeah. just used by God in a mighty way. The phone is blowing up and the text here. We didn't get to show everybody's text, but there's so many that are coming through on the comments. And I know the instant replay will also go out as it did last week. And by time all of our family continue to share and spread it all over. I know that it will continue to be a blessing to an exponential amount of people. So you all are blessing the world with your gifts. So thank you, Dr. Fowler. Thank you, Auntie Lois, economic evangelist. My sister, Patty Pennington from my hometown, my home girl, Detroit, the anointed psalmist herself in her own right. And of course, our very own pastor, Tony Howard. And um, it's just such a blessing. And um, I'm just so excited to share this time with you. Look, four yeah. days before my 13th wedding anniversary. <laughs> so I said that because, of course, he married us. And, of course, we had our services at Second and Victory Baptist. So I uh, had to get that for my your anniversary? Huh? When's your anniversary? In four days, April 29th, it'll be 13 years, 22 years, best friends with Carlton, but 13 years on uh, April 29th, which is in four days, which is before we have our next prayer. So I had to give that little shameless plug for my honey and I, since you all shared, everybody on the call just about shared that day with us 13 years ago. So very, very nice. Actually, and uh, my anniversary is on May 7th. Oh, wow. Happy yeah. anniversary. I know yours way longer than mine. How long has it been? 25. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Happy anniversary. Silver. Silver. So Silver. listen, we want to uh, say happy birthday, Ramon Savoy. Happy birthday to you, Ramon. Uh, enjoy your day. Uh, Ruben Kiwin and uh, my cousin, Kenya Matthews, out, out in Los Angeles, his mom, as you can see on the uh, screen here, 
Um, Michelle, that's my cousin over in Los Angeles. Her son's birthday is today. Happy birthday, cousin Kenya. And we're just grateful. My brother-in-law, Roy Johnson. Um, man, Roy, it, he's celebrating his birthday. He just celebrated his 32nd wedding anniversary the other day with my sister-in-law, Aura. And um, Roy has just, he is adamant. He took our bicycles past. He fixed up all of our bicycles. And so he's putting us out on the streets. We got our helmets and uh, we got to do some community street exercise. We're hitting the, we're hitting the roads on bicycles. So y'all pray for us. All right. <laughs> all right. And then um, also too, again, to the class of 2020, we're going to keep talking about you all. Uh, thank you to um, Lois Green. She works with so many of our young people. Um, everything is going to be all right. Everything. I, I, I believe that, huh? Yeah. Oh, hey, again, yeah, thank you so very much. And so are we closing out with song today, um, Dewana? I was hoping. I said Patty and Peck, but I don't want to put her on blast. I don't want to do anything. So it's a choice between me, Auntie, Dr. Fowler, Pastor Tony, or Commissioner. It's a choice between all of us. Well, you know, you know, yes. listen, you know, we're at Victory when uh, Dr. Fowler get ready to do a song, we all go. Oh Lord, here we go. Here we, go. <laughs> we, we, we always try to do it real respectfully. Uh, Pastor, can you let the choir handle that? Can you let Hubzetta uh, Purnell come up with your song? <laughs> uh, is one of them coming? To <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. So, Will, um, uh, I don't know, Patty, you, you got something for us? Uh, Evangelist Green, you got a closing hymn for us? Oh, that would be good. A hymn. Oh, yeah. We can all join in, huh? <laughs> okay, I'll do a hymn for you, and then we can join in. Okay. Glory, 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 Well, thank y'all so very much. God bless you all. Thank you very, very much. God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be blessed and have a great week in Clark County. Thank you so much. Let's please work together. Uh, Dr. Kathy Howard, thank you so very much for your support. We appreciate it. In. Dr. Esson, thank you. Uh, Ingrid um, Thorborn, thank you so very, very much. Michelle Dunn. Hey, Max Allen. I will get the um, sites to you, sir, and uh, you can continue to help us. Max um, is a small business. Um, he has a, a beautiful food truck that he travels around our community. And so we want to continue to um, bless Max. Zealous, thank you so very much for being a blessing. We thank you so very much. Lester, Lester Johnson, he's the cook over at the MLK Center. Les, you see the shirt today, huh? Les is such a blessing. We love Lester. Cassandra Lewis, pastor, you know, that's one of our favorite choir members. Absolutely. We love um, Cassandra Lewis and Tia. Thank you so very, very much. And it looks like um, uh, Tech Queen is going to have me sit here and shout everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but God bless you all. Uh, thank you all. Be blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time. Hey, Ruby, thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you guys. Keep us in prayer. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> Here we come. All right. I'm going to just put our little banner up. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Woo! All righty. <laughs>